We now proceed uh, to Deputy Speaker Marcoleta. Marcoleta. Deputy Speaker Marcoleta, you have 30 minutes. Go ahead. Those in plenary would have additional 10 minutes. So 30 Sir. minutes for the Honorable Marcoleta. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. You can uh, allow me a little time to just air my frustrations based on what I have observed during the last hearings and on the basis of the answers being given by our resource persons. Uh, Marami pong paikot-ikot, some convoluted answers, prevarications. Alam po ninyo, kailangan mabilisan na lang ito eh. Mr. Chair, I think the, the success, even the extent of our hearing here will depend entirely on how they will answer our questions. I'm very frustrated simply because not, uh, not only confusing answers na paikot-ikot, yung iba pa are, po, they are outright lies. For example, itong uh, Attorney Del Rosario, when I was asking him about the 100 million given to the Philippine National Red Cross, sasabihin niya sa akin, at dinig na dinig naman ninyo, he was not privy to the negotiations, para bang hindi niya alam, may hawak akong dokumento that he is one among the three members of the panel, ang kasama niya, Senior Vice President o Vice President Dr. Shirley Domingo at saka yung certain Mr. Oscar Cabado, Vice President for Membership and Attorney Del Rosario. Pagkatapos sasabihin niya sa atin, he was not privy to the negotiation between PHealth and PNRC. Sino hindi mo po prostrate dito? Para bang hindi niya alam, I have even the pictures na nandun siya. Kausap niya yung aking kumpare, Senator Gordon. Wala akong sinasabing masama tungkol sa PNRC. I'm only establishing the facts na nandun siya. Pero sasabihin niya sa atin, sa, sa, sa mukha natin, na, na magsisinungaling siyang ganun. Si Dr. Pargas naman, ikaw naman, tinanong ko lang kung magkano yung aking contributions. O after two days, kung hindi pa kita tinex, hindi mo ibibigay sa akin. How can you do this? Yung Manila doctors nangako ka sa akin. Hanggang kayo, nandito ha. Are we getting the right answers from you? Yung isa naman, sina, tinanong kita tungkol sa expanded withholding tax. I cannot remember kung sino na dito. I guess kayo po na nandyan sa... You were telling us pure lies. Ang sabi mo, Yung mga health uh, care institutions are the ones paying the expanded withholding tax. Di ba? You were collecting 2% expanded withholding tax. Hindi totoo yun eh. It was Pill Health itself because Pill Health is the only withholding agent of the BIR. Hindi yung health care institutions. Okay? Magkano ang binayad ng Pill Health? Sinabi na rin ang pagtatanong ni Congressman Barbers, 156.7 million. Kayo ang nagbayad. Pagkatapos, magsisinungaling kayo. Ano makukuha namin na, na mabuting sagot kung ganito ang gagawin ninyo? Ang sabi ni Dr. Attorney Del Rosario, isa lang ang department na. Parang hindi niya alam, may dokumento ako, apat ang departamento niya. May I start with you, Attorney Del Rosario, nandiyan ka ba ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Can, can I comment on some points raised by the... You Attorney have Department. no right. Tinatanong ko lang kung nandiyan ka pa. Thank you, sir. And Magaling kang magpaikot eh. And I warn you, kung ano lang ang tinatanong ko, yun ang sagutin mo. Wag ka magpapaikot dito. I think, Mr. Chair, we should already advise them that right now, we're working on a complaint for plunder, malversation, and charges of administrative offenses, and so many things. And the final form of this complaint will depend much entirely on the kind of answers that you will give us. 
Attorney Del Rosario, hindi ba ikaw ang, re ang regional vice president ng Region 1? Noong uh, yes, 220 cases against hospitals and doctors were forwarded to your office. Yes or no? Yes, sir. I was once... Uh, yes uh, or no? Yes, I was once uh, regional vice president of Peter, Region 1. In 2019, nung hindi na ikaw ang senior vice president, teka muna, you were asked to file 220 cases. Ilan ang pinail mo? I'm sorry, Mr. President. The, the ones uh, filing the... I cases am asking you, uh, out of the 220 cases endorsed to your office, how many cases did you file? The, regi the regional vice president is not the one filing uh, cases, uh, Mr. President. It's the, we, it's the legal office of the region that files Attorney Del Rosario, I'm warning you, I have documents with me. Wag mo kong paiikutin. I don't care if you're the best lawyer in this country. Pero sa ngayon, sagutin mo lang ang tinatanong ko sa iyo. Because in 2019, nung hindi na ikaw ang senior vice president, ito ang lumitaw. Only three cases were filed versus St. Catherine Hospital. Totoo hindi? I, I don't have the data. As I've told you, Mr. President, the one filing the cases... What do you know? The... Palaging paikot-ikot eh. Ikaw ang binigyan ng SPA. Do you want me to show the document that you were given an SPA by then Interim President and CEO De La Serna to file appropriate criminal, civil, and administrative cases? For example, against several uh, culprits. This is dated November 2, 2017. Hindi mo Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, particular... I am uh, asking you, do you know about this SPA? I, I've known that SPA only of late, uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have not seen that... Uh, th that particular document was forwarded directly to I the, am asking you uh, if you know this because this is an SPA issued to you by Interim President CEO De La Serna, dated November 2, 2017. I have During the documents the with me. Yes, sir. I, I've, seen, I've already seen that document. But oh. uh, I cannot remember seeing that document uh, uh, in 2017, Stop. Your Honor. Mr. Mr. There Jay. was even an endorsement dated 13 September 2017 for the filing of criminal and administrative case against a certain Dr. Martin Corpus. You know this document, don't you? I've seen that document uh, on Do the you know this city. document? I'm not asking you whether or not you saw the document. Yes, Your Honor. Paikot-ikot ka. Ito, Mr. Chair, ang problema sa taong ito eh. Despite all this, SPA endorsement, 220 cases endorsed to your office since you were acting regional vice president of Region 1. Wala kang ginawang pinayl na kaso kahit isa. For example, it was also disclosed nung mawala ka na sa Region 1, 11 cases are missing. 10 cases versus Elgira General Hospital. One case against Dr. Macario Macaraeg. You deny this? I, I'm not aware of that, uh, Mr. Oh, yan. Yan, yan ka na naman. You remember I have all the documents. I don't care if you remember or you don't remember. That's your problem. Meron kang pinirmi.
Ito yung natural ko pare, hindi ako na... Okay. Session resume. O, oh, para hindi ka naman baka mamaya mag... Uh, magmalinger ka na naman, ano? Meron kang memorandum... Number 2018-14. You directed its and every provincial regional office to file at least one complaint per quarter. Itong memong ito'y ginawa mo, Doc, uh, Attorney Del Rosario, after certain operational audits, fact-finding investigations nakalagay sa memo mo, that there are certain facilities and professionals that are acting against the interest of the PhilHealth Fund. Kaya ang ginawa mo, gumawa ka ng memorandum, you ask all the regional uh, offices to determine and ascertain those people, those culprits, identify all them. Parang ang ganda, no? To protect the interest of the PhilHealth Fund. What is the reason why you gave them a quota of only one criminal case per one quarter? What is the logic for making or putting a quota or any limitation? Sir, that uh, quota is uh, the minimum. Uh, kasi napansin ko po nung pag-assume uh, ko dito that ever since uh, PhilHealth was created, there were only 11 complaints, uh, criminal complaints filed. And I reviewed the uh, cases, and all the uh, criminal complaints were filed by the central office. So there was actually a confusion whether who will file the criminal complaints. So I issued that memorandum, but uh, at the same time, I recognized the limitations of the regions pertaining to their capacity to process all these cases. Attorney so Del Rosario. Why... Yes, sir. Uh, alam niyo po dito sa session si Congressman Marculeta, Congressman Barsaga, hindi na po dapat sila nagpupunta rito because of the COVID. The least you could do, Attorney Del Rosario, while uh, conducting Zoom at nandiyan naman po kayo sa Zoom, eh, i-on niyo naman po yung video niyo para nakikita kayo ni Congressman Marculeta habang nag-interplate siya. Oh, thank you, Mr. Marculeta. Chair. Kahit hindi ko na siya nakikita, Mr. Chair, mas okay pa sa akin eh. Importante lang sa akin, sagutin niya ng matino yung tinatanong ko. So, ang sinasabi mo, Attorney Del Rosario, Yes, sir. Ikaw palang nag-determine. Gaano ka kasigurado na yung uh, determination mo, that's only one filing of one case per quarter, yun ang tama, to protect the interest of PhilHealth? Bakit naman? No, that's the minimum, Mr. Chair. Sino nagsabi sa yung minimum? Who sir, told you? Kasi, Who instructed you? To give that minimum, why not five? Why not ten? Kasi yung ano ko kasi sir during that time, wala pong no 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 no. Sino ang nagsabi sa yon? Who gave you the guideline? Nakinakailangan isang kaso lang per quarter. Can you imagine one filing of case for three months? Sino ka para idetermine mo sa sarili mo na yun ang minimum? Why 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 work for the minimum? Why not maximize the opportunity of being able to determine all those culprits in order to defend and protect the funds of, of Pill Health? Wag ka na mga tuwiran na kung ano-ano. So, si ikaw palang nagdi-determine. Yung palang mabuti sa Pill Health. That is the way to protect the funds of Pill Health. Kailangan isa lang na case ang ipahil in three months' time. Mr. Hindi ko Chairman. Hindi ko alam kung anong logic meron ka, attorney. Ha? Mr. Chair. Teka muna, I'm not asking you anything. Okay, sir. Proceed, sir. Sorry, sorry. Doon sa Peel Health Circular, dito makikita natin, Mr. Chair, siyang nagdi-determine. Wala kang sinabi na ang board ang nag-advise sa'yo. Not even the board, not even the Exicom. Only one person, Mr. Chair, has the power to determine 
kung sino at ilan ang ipapayal na case. Sus Mario Josep na buhay ito. Doon sa Philhead Circular 2020, balikan natin yan, 0007. Mayroong effectivity doon eh, napansin ko lang kagabi nung nire-review ko ito eh. Do you know the effectivity of that particular circular, Attorney Del Rosario? If I remember it right, I think it's March 20 or 21, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Narinig mo yung sagot, Mr. Chair? Why did you say it took effect on March 31? 21 yata. 21 po yata. I don't have the document right now, Mr. President. Wala ka palang dokumento. Bakit sinasabi mong March 20? March 31 what? What year? 2020? Are you referring to the IRM circular, Mr. Chair? I am talking about Bill Health Circular 2020. Ito yung IRM. COVID-19 ito. Kabisado mo ito eh. Bakit mo sinabing March 31, 2020 ang effectivity? Why? Hindi sir. Ang sabi ko sir, ang alam ko March 20 or March 21. Ang sinasabi ko sa'yo, merong effectivity itong circular na to. Ang tanong ko sa'yo, do you know when did this Bill Health Circular take effect? I think nakalagay po dyan, effective immediately, Your Honor. So, hindi mo kabisado? You tell me, I will help you. Hindi mo kabisado? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, it takes immediately from its publication in a newspaper of general circulation and, and, take note, three copies, certified copies, to have been furnished to the Office of the National Administrative Register of the UP Law Center. When did you, or Peel Health, Furnish the Office of National Administrative Hospital of UP. When? When did Honor of UP Law Center receive the three copies from Bill Health? Sir, it, uh, it's not my office that uh, is in charge of that. So maybe we can ask the uh, sector. But maybe, in maybe, kana naman eh. You are the executive vice president ng legal sector. You have worked for Pilhead for 20 years or so. Pati lang itong effectivity. Ito na naman, napaikot-ikot ka na naman. Alam mo ito eh. Do I need to tell you or, or give you the document? Ako mismo Sir, ang nag-ano eh, ang nag-search eh. Sir, doon sa, during the Senate hearing, it was mentioned that uh, it was only on, in June that uh, Pilhead provided oh. uh, copies to the... Honor. So what day in June? What day in June? If I remember it right, it's June 11, yung document shown by Senator Lacton. Alam mo, alam na alam mo na yun eh. Magmamali ka pa eh. June 11, hindi 7. Do I need to correct you every time? I said June 11, Mr. Chair. Okay. So ngayon, alam natin, ito palang IRM took effect legally June 11, 2020. So what happened to the funds that you disbursed prior to this date? What? Sir, it appears that uh, the uh, requirement of the circular was not uh, satisfied uh, as to the uh, requirement to furnish the... Uh, what kind of answer is that? Are you a lawyer? Talaga ba lawyer ka? June 11, Nung magkaroon ng kopya ang owner of the UP Law Center. Meaning to say, doon lang nag-take effect yung inyong yung circular 2020-0007. right? Ang tinatanong ko sa'yo, what happened to the funds disbursed prior to this date? Let's say March, April, May, and June 10. What happened to those funds? Sir, it would appear that uh, those funds were not uh, uh, released uh, based on the uh, uh, prerequisites set by the circular on the uh, publication and the furnishing of copies to the owner. What? Can you speak better than that? Do you have a better explanation than that? Napakasimple ng tanong ko eh. Ano ngayon ang mangyayari? Do sa pondo na nirelease ninyo 
prior to the effectivity of this circular. So it, it is without authority uh, it would appear, Mr. Chair. Anong, anong sabi niya? Without authority. Oh, so walang authority. Then what happens to you now? To all of you? Illegal. Oh, illegal. Okay. Mabuti yan nagsasabi ka na ng totoo ngayon. Ako yun. Ako nagsabi nun. Honorable Marcoleta. Ah, ikaw ba? Oh, pasagotin natin sila. Do you? Okay. Do you agree to the statement of the chairman? Illegal. Oh, hindi na makasagot. Uh, are you asking me? Yes, uh, Mr. I agree with oh, the illegal, chairman. Oh, illegal, di ba? Illegal na. It is not... Uh, this not, it did not uh, comply. Tinatanong with, uh, lang kita, illegal na, di ba? Simple, yes, simple. Chairman. Attorney Del Rosario, simple lang po sagot. Illegal po ba? Hindi. Yes, I agree. I agree, Mr. Chair. Ano sagot, na, Mr. Chair? Sabi niya, yes, I admit, I am pretty certain. I, I, Is that correct? I agree. I agree with the chairman that uh, it's illegal. Oh. Oh. Was that properly recorded, Mr. Chair? Yes, Honorable Marcoleta. It was on record. Thank you. Attorney Del Rosario, bilang isang napakahusay na abogado, ikaw ba naniniwala na ang COVID-19, alam mo siguro yung COVID-19, hindi ba? Alam mo ba yung COVID-19, Attorney Del Rosario? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Kailangan makasiguro tayo, Mr. Chair. Eh. Masyadong madulas ito eh. Is COVID-19 can be considered a fortuitous event within the meaning and objectives of Peel Health Circular Number 2020-007? Wag kang sasagot nang hindi mo naintindihan. Within the meaning and objectives of Peel Health Circular 2020-007, can COVID-19 be considered a fortuitous event? I think uh, my opinion on the matter, Mr. Chair, is that the fortuitous event is the pandemic uh, caused by the COVID-19 uh, uh, infections, uh, Mr. Chair. Attorney Del Rosario, kung alam mo, nasa courtroom lang tayo, ako ang judge. Baka pinalabas na kita. Tinatanong lamang kita eh. Kung within the meaning and objectives of your own circular, kung makukonsider mo bilang isang mahusay na abogado na fortuitous event ito, you can refer to your circular kung gusto mo. Kabisado mo ito kaysa sa akin. Eh. Kung ngayon ko lang nabasa ito eh. Paano ka namang hindi masusuya sa ganitong klaseng mga sagot na? Naininiwala ka ba na ito makaklasify na fortuitous event? I, yes, sir. I think that's the intention of the oh, operation. Yun. yun ang paniwala mo, hindi ba? So, nakalimutan mo, second paragraph ng rasyonal ng Pilhead Circular sinasabi ang ganito. Act of God, like floods, typhoons, di ba? Wars, gera, to effect displacement of communities in several endangered areas. So dito makikita, yung Port to Cement has the capacity to displace a community. Merong physical, ano ito eh? Merong physical attribute ito, displacement of communities. Under objectives nakalagay, to provide aid to healthcare institutions in rebuilding they're critically damaged healthcare systems. Physical ang pinag-uusapan dito eh. Pagkatapos, hiningam ka pa ng description or photo of the effects of fortuitous event. Nakikita mo ba yung COVID-19? Atone Del Rosario? Do you see the enemy? Uh, no, sir. Only oh, the eh, effects. Oh, kinakailangan ng photo rito eh. Paano mo lilitratuan si COVID-19? Hindi mo nga nakikita eh. Pagkatapos, nandun pa, explicitly, explicitly 
mention if majority of the claims under the HCI's custody were totally destroyed. Anong ibig sabihin nito? These are collection of words and phrases that denote that something was damaged, physically damaged. Kaya nga kailangan yung IRM. Eh. Kaya kanina tinatanong kita kung klasipikado nga na for 2 to 7. Yes, sir lang na yes, sir. Pero hindi mo naiintindihan ang sarili mong uh, circular. Bakit nagsinungaling ka sa akin o sabihin mo na you are not privy to the negotiation between PNRC and PhilHealth? At thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, negotiation na pumunta po kami doon, kausap namin si Senator Gordon, does not pertain to the amount of the mobilization fund. Ang pinag-usapan po namin dito doon, Mr. Chair, ay uh, yung uh, proseso kung paano makatulong yung PhilHealth doon sa pagpapabilis ng uh, uh, pag-submit ng uh, documents ng Red Cross for liquidation. At hindi po yung usapan po doon tungkol sa ano po, uh, tungkol sa amount ng mobilization fund. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sa paniwala, sa panagay mo ba kapanipaniwala yung sagot mo sa akin? Hindi ba totoo na tatlo kayo rito? Nasa akin ang dokumento, attorney. Yes, Ngayon, sir. Kung pipilitin mo, Mr. Chairman. Kung pipilitin mo na magsinungaling ka pa, nasa sa'yo yun. Okay? Kaya nga sinasabi ko sa'yo kanina, the final form of this complaint for plunder, malversation, and so on and so forth, will depend on the kind of answers that you will give this joint committee. Kasama mo si legal or vice president Shirley Domingo and Mr. Cabado, the vice president for membership, noong inegotiate ninyo, kayo ang panel na pagkatapos ano, directly magsisinungaling ka sa amin. Uh, yes, sir. We negotiated. But ano yun, sir? Yung dinidiscuss namin, yung, yung proseso, eh, hindi po yung uh, amount po ng mobilization. Uh, <laughs> that, the amount of mobilization, sir, ano po yun eh? Top level uh, negotiation po. So, gano, uh, gano, pari, katap, gano katap yung level? Pumunta po kami doon, uh, hindi naman po naman si Senator Gordon po yung uh, intention namin kausap, yung naman po mga staff, uh, yung uh, gagawa po ng mga forms. Uh, tapos nakita lang po kami ni Senator Gordon, kaya po kami tinawag. So, so sige, po yun yung... maglubit ka ng buhangin kung gusto mo. Pero ang sinasabi ko rito, yung 100 million is a clear deviation from the objectives and parameters set forth in your own PhilHealth Circular. Because, ang sinasabi ko sa'yo, sa aminin mo hindi wala namang historical claims ang ang ano ang, ang PNRC so kailangan explain mo sa amin ano ang basis ng 100 million sapagkat akala ko ba kasi dito lumilitaw Mr. Chair yung paggastos yung pagwaldas ng pera ng PhilHealth walang patumanga walang protection Kaya kapag tatanungin mo sila, ano bang basis nito? Anong guideline dito? Bakit ginamit ninyo yung COVID-19 circular? Pagkatapos wala namang claims dito. Wala namang i-rebuild. Wala namang facilities na gagawin. But you earmark 100 million for PNRC. That's only the point. I wanted to establish kapag ang pinag-uusapan, paggasta, mabilis. Walang patumangga. Mr. Chair, Peel Health, as one institution forgot one thing, na itong perang ito, hindi sa kanila. They keep the money in trust. They have that fiduciary responsibility to protect this trust. Alam mo, Atty. Del Rosario, yung pera mo, kung po-protectionan mo yun, okay lang kasi pera mo yun. Eh. Pero ito, kung kinakailangan triplihin mo o sampuhin mo ang pangangalaga sa perang ito, that is the requirement of a fiduciary responsibility. Do you agree or not? We agree, uh, Mr. President. Thank uh, you. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yun ang gusto naming standard sana. Eh. Hindi ganun eh. Hindi ganun. Mr. Chair, may I direct my questions to other panels? Sino po kaya ang pwedeng sumagot dito? I would think uh, Dr. Pargas would have a hand on that, on the 100 million ceiling for uh, Philippine National Red Cross. Yung po yung tanong ng uh, 
Honorable Malcoreta, sino ang nagrekomenda ng 100 million at bakit ibibigay? Dr. Pargas. Uh, Mr. Chair, Attorney Labe will respond on that. Attorney Labe. Mr. Chair, good afternoon. I'm not privy to the 100 million, but I understand how they funded this project, Mr. Chair, because the expanded targeting testing was computed at 2% of the 13 million population in NCR at the time, Mr. Chair, and it's about, I think, 900 million. But as regards to the advance payment of the 100 million, I was not part of the... I, I'm not privy to that, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yung, yung word for the day ngayon is, or the phrase, I'm not privy. Nagbayad ba ng ex expanded withholding tax? Binawas nyo ba yun? Nung ibigay nyo yung 100 million sa PNRC? Oh, you are not privy. Okay. Attorney <laughs> Dr. Pargas, on August 5, 2011, PhilHealth issued Circular Number 011-2011 to implement a case-based payment. Ito yung ACR, case rate, for 23 selected cases and surgical procedures. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. You know, you cannot blame me if I expect, you know, faster answers. Kasi circular ninyo ito eh. Ako, dalawa, tatlong araw ko lang nabasa ito eh. But uh, I can commit them into memory if I want to. I, it was signed by our president then on August 5, Mr. Chief. Yeah, that is correct. And in this circular, it says that it should be reviewed every six months. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Every six months. Positive, okay? Yes? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. On October 29, 2013, Peel Health issued circular number 0031, series of 2013, to implement an all-case rate policy. Correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. The objectives are as follows. Reduce claim processing or time turnaround TAT. Increase pill health support value. Rationalize reimbursement rates and achieve technical efficiency for providers. Okay. Isa-isahin natin, Dr. Pargas. Achieve technical efficiency for providers. Did we achieve this? Yes, Mr. Chair. How can you say that? Technical efficiency for cell providers. Katakot-takot na audit observation memo. Inulang kayo ng napakaraming notice of disallowances concerning the payments to these hospitals and care capacity. Pagkatas sasabihin mo, <laughs> how could you even say that? Achieve technical efficiency for providers. Rationalize reimbursement rates. Okay. Have we rationalized reimbursement rates? Have we? Uh, Tinanong nga kita nung isang araw eh. What will happen to the excess payment given to the hospital? Sabi mo sa hospital na lang yun. Is that the way you rationalize reimbursements, Dr. Pargas? Uh, ang, kanyang, ang kanyang intervention is only 10,000 pesos. Binayaran mo siya ng 15,000 pesos. Yung 5,000 napunta sa hospital. That is rationalization. That is rationalization? Sir, Mr. Chair, uh, with regard to the one, ang prinsipyo po kasi nung case rate really is um, mag, dahil fix po siya, Meron po talagang mga kaso na maaaring mas mataas ang nagagastos Alam pero na maaari natin yung Dr. Pargas eh. We've been there. Ulit-ulit na tayo dyan. But the system is bad. It is not correct because it is not a system where you were able to get back 
the excess fund para magamit uli ng filter. That is the most ideal thing to do. You remember the bus conductor or the bus inspector I, I've been telling you? You yes, remember the, the inspector in the trains? Yes, Mr. Ganun Chair. dapat yun eh. So walang nag, nag, wala talagang mala sa akit eh. Dr. Pargas, I'm sorry to say, pero ang audit report nyo, since that, that time, parating negative. Wala kayong naging auditing report na positive. Precisely. Kaya nga itong mga objectives na ito na binabasa, walang natupad dito eh. Example, paano mo na-reduce yung claim processing? Dahil mabilis kang magbayad. Siyempre, wala na eh. Kahit na ba mga sumobra pa ng 10,000 ito eh. Ano naman ang paki ninyo? Hindi talaga ang lumilitaw dito sa pagsusuri namin dito. Pag yung, pag yung pag-alaga, yung pagsinup do sa pondo, walang masyadong, wala kayong pakialam doon eh. Yung, dis, yung, yung pag-disburse, yung pag-spend, ay eh, yun ang mabilis. Tingnan na lamang natin, Mr. Chair. Ang pagkakaalam ko, the number two killers, mortal, mortality, you know, uh, na, na pumapatay sa tao, ngayon, sa ngayon, number one, heart diseases. Number two, vascular diseases. Number three, malignant neoplasma. This, yung, ito yung cancer. Bakit ang nangyari, Dr. Pargas, ang tatlong pinakama yung top ninyo na ailments na binabayaran under all case rate, pneumonia, gastroenteritis, and UTI. What happened to the three topmost killers in this country? Did you ever think about this? Did you adopt a study? Mukhang talagang walang pag-aaral dito. Somebody have been telling me na ito po talagang minadali. Ito walang... Now we are able to confirm all this. Even by way of your answers, you are not able to reply to us with certainty, with conviction, and in all honesty, I am prostrated with the answers that you are giving us. Ang gusto ko lang kaya ako nagpunta rito, Mr. Chair, I wanted to see that Attorney Del Rosario, I want to, 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 to tell him in his face how frustrated I am in giving me all these answers, these silly answers. Alam po ba ninyo, Dr. Pargas? Alam ko eh. Nagre-research din ako, eh. maski mahirap eh. Ang daming adverse ko a finding sa inyo. For example, less than a year after the ACR was implemented, na-implement kasi nag you started with 23, so 2011, less than a year after the ACR implementation, Peel Health suffered financial bleeding. And dami, it was triggered by spate overpayment of notice of disallowances. And dami. Let, let me cite examples. Region 5, Dr. Pargas. Notice of this allowance dated September 12. 2,273,000, blah, blah, blah. Uh, audit observation memo, PC, it's, Peel Health is not protecting. Ito yung observation mismo, ha? ang sakit nito. Eh. Peel Health is not protecting the interests of its members and instead benefiting the institutional health care providers. Baligtad eh. Ito yung observation ng... Uh, I'm not sure uh, if you... Honorable Marcoleta, with apologies, uh, can you wrap up? I am trying, Mr. Chair. But I think you will have to forgive me if I continue. I continuously forgive you. Thank you. Honorable Marcoleta. <laughs> Region 12, audit observation memo, questioning the validity of benefits claims, payment of 4.6 million due to lack of statement of accounts from HCIs. Region 2, notice of disallowance dated August 31, 2018, disallowed the overpayment of 56 million. NCR, various notice of disallowances disallowing the payments of some 54 million pesos. Not only that, Mr. Chair, not only the adverse findings of the COA, ito mga independent studies ito, Dr. Pargas, I will cite several of them. In November 2016, a paper entitled 2016 Health Finance Policy Sector Report Rationalizing Case Rates was presented to the Peel Health Board. You recall this, Mr. Pargas? No, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, 
In 2012 po, I was in corporate communications. 2013 to 28, mid-2018, I am with the corporate affairs. Ako po ay napunta lang sa health finance noon pong uh, mid of 2018 as an OIC and was appointed as senior vice president ng health finance noong 2019. What so, are you saying? You don't know about this paper? Uh, uh, when it was presented po, uh, I was not there during that time. So yeah, the question is, do you know? And you, you, you came to know about this paper? Uh, yun I lang. Mean, yun I lang ang tanong. And Mr. Chair, yung title, just to, sorry po, apologies po, yung title lang po. Ito nga, 2016 Health Finance Policy Sector Report Rationalizing Case Rates. Important ito because these are independent studies commenting and, you know, trying to help you determine the weaknesses of the system. I, this is, I, I this think, is on record. This is on record. Yes, you know po. this? I think I've heard okay. naman po. Yun yes. lang naman eh. Yes po. Okay. This report, Dr. Pargas, for your elementary education, showed that the fee for service, ito yung dati, this is the uh, old system na pinalitan ng all case rates. The FFS payment schemes average value per claim did not exceed 5,000. So yung old system ninyo, yung average value per claim did not even exceed 5,000 pesos. Ito yung sinasabi ng report. Itong all case rate, all case rate posted an increase of 44.9% average increase in payment to level 1 hospitals. Is this correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, yes. This report also further showed that despite a 9% decrease in the number of claims in level 1 hospitals, nag-decrease, ah? Nag-decrease ng 9% yung claims ng level 1 hospitals, but the amount paid to them increased by 65% nung gamitin na ninyo ang ACR system. Ito yung lumabas sa study. Okay. The same report, Mr. Chair, disclosed also that an overpayment in more than one-fourth of the total claims, one-fourth ng total claims in 2016, ay nandoon. And it resulted in overpayment of about 2.6 billion pesos for the same year. Ito yung sinabi ng study. Okay? Ito pa. Also, in November 2016, in Davao City, mayroong in-house actuary na nag-present ng report entitled, eh, this is the title of the report, Towards NHIP, eh, ito yata yung National uh, Health, Health Insurance, Insurance Program. Program, Sustainability, Fiscal Year 2016 to 2025. It was presented at the PhilHealth Regional Consultative Meeting. You know about this? I, 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 I would okay. recall, Mr. Chair. So, ang ano lang, ang factual lang talagang, it did happen talaga. There was a paper presented in such a <laughs> gathering, right? I would suppose so, Mr. Chair. Okay. Chair. This report, Dr. Pargas, warned PhilHealth that the NHIP fund operated at a net loss for fiscal year 2011, 2012, 2013 and 2015. Okay, yun ang report. We learned kayo na you were on a operating loss. This report also projected that the fund would be depleted by 2019 because the expected operating expense was estimated at 140 billion or a deficit of 140 billion. Ang estimated collection yun lang naman ninyo, 110 billion. So you have a deficit of 10 billion. Honorable Marcoleta, mukha naman pong uh, agree naman po si SP Vargas sa lahat ng mga binanggit ninyo at tama po yung inyong mga pinunto. I'll give you uh, time to wrap up and the next is the Honorable Rimulya. Sa likod nyo lang po ang uh, kagalang-galang uh, boy. Yes, yes sir, pero ito namang si Congressman Rimulya kasi kaibigan ko naman ito talaga. Eh. Pagpapasay sana ko nito. Isa na lang kasi pong... Sige po, Honorable Marcoleta. Dr. Pargas, 
In 2018, ito gusto, mas importante ito mga independent studies na ito eh. A 2018 World Bank paper entitled Striving for Equity and Efficiency, an Assessment of Provider Payment Reforms in the Philippine Health Sector. Meron din ito. This World Bank paper recommended the revision. Tandaan po rin Kung wala po kayo nito, dapat... Pero dapat naman meron kayo. This World Bank paper recommended the revision of the ACR payment mechanism, noting that case rates fix the amount that providers receive in advance and eliminate the option of uncontrolled balance billing in public and private hospitals. Ito yung dapat ninyong mga... It further noted that when PhilHealth switched to case rate payments, it failed to put in place a cost control mechanism. Ito yung pinakamabigat. Kaya ang sabi nga natin, eh, talagang gatas ang baka na nga. Ito, tatagalog ko yung isa para mas matindi. Sabi pa nito, ang dalawang pinakaimportanteng risk aspeto ng polisiya ng ACR or all case rate, maganyak ang tagabigay ng serbisyo na maging technically efficient at maprotektahan ang mga pasyente sa mga panganib na pampinansyal na hindi matutupad sa paraan ng pagkakadisenyo ng, A ng ACR policy. Ang konklusyon, mismong na-request na gawin para sa PhilHealth at DOH at ang payo kay DOH, ganito, the fundamental shortcoming in the way the case rate payment mechanism has been implemented is exactly the same as the PFFS. Ito yung nakaraan. With the ACR payment serving merely as a discount off the hospital service charge. Napakasakit po na ito. Pero ito, these are all, uh, I'd say, mga guidelines na binigay sa inyo, pambukas isip sa inyo. Pero bali ka na kita, ito huli na po ito sapagkat marami pa akong itatanong pero second round na lang ako. The last, the last hearing, Dr. Pargas, ang sabi mo sa akin, Sa lahat ng nangyayaring ganito, the structural deficiency in the system of collecting the balances, kung meron man. Sabi ko, pinag-aralan mo ba? Sabi, ang sabi mo sa akin, aaralin nyo pa lang. Paano nangyari yun? Yung inyong policy, dapat every six months inaaralin nyo. The independent studies, sinabi na sa inyo ang deficiency, even the World Bank. Pagkatapos sinabi mo sa akin noong nakarang araw, aaralin nyo pa lang. You started in 2011. Nine years later, sasabihin mo, Dr. Pargas, aaralin nyo pa lang. What will happen to the fund? What will happen to the fund? Mr. Chair, I will reserve my right for the second round. Thank you very much. Honorable Rimulia, before we proceed to uh, the Honorable... Ay, Honorable uh, Marcoleta, before we proceed to Honorable Rimulia, Na pansin po kasi ng mga media, nagsasabi po kayo nung filing of a uh, plunder case. Gusto ko lang po linawin uh, with your indulgence, yung pong napag-usapan natin na we as a committee, the Good Government and Public Accountability and the Committee and Public Accounts may decide to be part of the filing of cases against PhilHealth officials and yung po mga healthcare providers that we deem are part of the scheme to defraud field health of funds. Tama po ba yun? That is correct, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Honorable McColeta. We now proceed to the Honorable uh, Rimulia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Nandiyan pa ba ho si Attorney Del Rosario? Attorney Del Rosario? Mr. Chair, nandito po, nandito po. Wala ka pa sa video? Ay, ayan ako, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hanggang hapon. Nung lunes po, nakilala ko kayo, no? Nandito kayo sa House of Representatives. Yes, sir. But wala ko kayo ngayon? Sir, uh, medyo masama pong pakiramdam ko. Uh, tapos, uh, naka-receive na po tayo ng preventive suspension. So, inaayos ko po yung magamit ko kasi this will be the last day that I will be in office uh, for the next six months. I apologize, Mr. Chair. How old are you, Attorney Del Rosario? 
I'm 45 years old, uh, Mr. Chair. 45 years old. Ilang taon na kayo sa PhilHealth? I've been with PhilHealth since uh, 1998. Po. So, 1998, you were 22 or 23 years old. Nasa PhilHealth na ho kayo. That's, that is correct, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, this is not your first job? Or is PhilHealth your first job or not? Uh, no, sir. I worked with... Uh, I was a radio broadcaster, a uh, reporter... And I worked with the DNR and then Civil Service Commission. And I was uh, invited by the first president of Pilar, Joe Fabia, who joined Pilar as his executive assistant. So, naka-apat na trabaho na kayo bago kayo pumasok sa PhilHealth at the very young age of 23 years old? Yes, sir. Pero maikling panahon lang po, sir. One year, one year po. So, ano-ano yung maging, naging trabaho nyo sa PhilHealth, Mr. De Rosario? Uh, Mr. President, I'm uh, Mr. Chair. I was uh, executive assistant. Then uh, I was a job order contractor. When uh, Attorney Fabio resigned, I was uh, deemed resigned. So I applied back to PhilHealth Health as a job order. Then eventually I was uh, uh, appointed as a development management officer for assigned at the membership uh, and contributions. Uh, ano 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 I think uh, mga 24, 24, 25, uh, Mr. Chair. So, sandali lang kayo nag-job order, tapos naging permanente kagad kayo sa PhilHealth? Yes, sir. Mga 6 months po akong job order, sir. Oh, tapos, uh, kinuha na kayo. So, doon kayo sa membership contributions, tapos saan pa kayo nagtabaho? Anong, anong party pa ng corporation? Membership contributions, then I was assigned po, sir, sa Office of the SBP Operations, Office of the Worker Workers Program. I was also uh, staff uh, benefits development office. Then I was uh, chief of uh, corporate planning. Uh, Kailang kayo naging chief ng corporate planning? Uh, I think sir, 20, 2005, 2004. So anong salary grade nyo noon, noong uh, 2007? Uh, salary grade 22 po. Pardon me? 22, sir. 22. 22. Salary grade 22. Okay. Yes, so, corporate planning, tapos? Uh, corporate, nung nasa corporate planning ako, sir, naging division chief ako, SG24 na po yun. Tapos, uh, naging um, uh, OIC manager pa ako ng corporate communications. Uh, I, nakalimutan ko pang sir, naging OIC manager din po ako ng information technology. No information pretty. technology, naging chief din kayo ng information technology. Yes sir, opo. Nung panahon po na... Anong year yun? Uh, ano sir, November 4, 2011. Uh, mga one year din po ako doon bago ako nalipat ulit. Okay, tapos? Tapos sir, uh, I was designated na po sa... Uh, ay, yung isa sir, sa PRID pa po, no? Physical Resource Infrastructure Department. Naging, man, naging OIC senior manager din po. So, physical infrastructure department? Yes, sir. Okay, tapos? Tapos, uh, tapos sir, naging OIC RVP ng Region 1. Kaya anong year yun? Naging OIC RVP kayo, Regional Vice President ng Region 1? Uh, yung first assignment ko po, sir, doon, sir, 2013, for seven months lang po, sir. Tapos, uh, nabalik po ako sa central office as manager of corporate communications department. Then I was transferred to NCR South Branch. Then after noon, uh, reassigned po ulit ako sa Region 1 uh, for more than two years na po. Uh, uh, two, years, uh, two, two years and seven months po ata. Uh, then uh, after Region 1, Region 11, uh, tapos sir, I was uh, uh, I, I was I was reassigned to uh, legal na po, 20 18 July. July 2018, you were assigned to legal. Anong position nyo sa legal sector or legal department ng Fear Health? Uh, OIC, sir. Uh, officer in charge ng uh, Office of the Senior Vice President when the SVP took a leave of absence. Sino yung to, SVP uh, na yun? Uh, Attorney Jermaine Lim. Okay. Tapos? Then, sir, I was appointed as SVP na po at uh, April of 2019. April of 2019, naging SVP na kayo ng legal? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. 
So, the whole time, kailan kayo naging abogado, Atty. De Rosario? I became a lawyer in 2016, sir. I took the bar in 2015. I took the bar when I was with Region 1. Uh, I took a leave of absence for uh, several months to review and to take the bar. Gano katagal kayo sa law school? How long were you in the College of Law? Ano, sir? Uh, including po yung leave of absence ko na one year, mga six years. Six years, tapos. Uh, so, binigyan nyo sa amin yung, yung background Parang before you became EO, uh, OIC of uh, the legal sector, parang wala kayong legal training. May legal training na ba kayo bago noon? Uh, wala, sir. Kasi ano po eh, uh, yun lang po yung ano ko, yun yung time na, na ano po ako, nag, nagung, uh, naging, uh, uh, ano tawag dito, naging OIC ng legal. Doon lang po ako nagkaroon ng legal, na, doon lang po ako na-exposed. Uh, ano, so, sa isang korporasyon na 150 billion a year, almost ang budget, would you say that your legal experience is good enough for you to hold the senior vice president position of the legal sector of Fair Health? Uh, sir, kasi ang nangyari, I, I, I have no, no, no. intention po. Ano lang, natanong ko lang sa'yo, if it's good enough, if you're If your qualifications are good enough to make you the senior vice president of a one of a 200 billion peso corporation, the senior, the senior vice president vice for legal affairs of a 200 billion peso corporation. Uh, I think, sir, the qualifications. Uh, kaya don sa ano engineering, sir. Ang proposal po namin sa sa chief general counsel po yung position. I extensive na uh, experience sa uh, legal. Uh, kasi uh, napakahirap po sir eh. Napakahirap po Mr. Chairman. Uh, I I would prefer a, an operations uh, or corporate planning. So plan you admit Mr. De Rosario that you are not really meant for that job. Hindi nyo tal hindi talaga kayo qualified to head yes, the legal department of the biggest GOCC in the Philippines. Sir, in terms of sa SPP position, I think I, I'm qualified. My appointment has been validated. But uh, the legal sector will benefit from a more experienced uh, legal uh, uh, person, uh, Mr. Chair. S sino nag-validate so, ng iyong pagiging SVP ng, uh, ng Fair Health? Yung sinasabi mong validation. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Who validated your competence to be the senior vice president of the legal department of Phil Health? Uh, first, sir, the selection process, the Phil, the Phil Health Board, and uh, the appointment was validated by the Civil Service Commission. Validate the Civil Service Commission. Are you assessor, Attorney De Rosario? I am uh, CSEE, sir. Career Service Executive Eligible. Oh, so you're a CSEE uh, since when? After part 2011, 2011 po. I think uh, Honorable uh, Rimulia, VP Mass of uh, Human Resources, will reply. Yes, sir, I, sa, under sa sector ko, Human Resources Department, I would like to submit itong certified true copy ng uh, report of, on appointment issued by PhilHealth. Nakalagay dito, uh, Rodolfo De Losario validated. This is valid his appointment was uh, validated by uh, Director for Judith uh, Dongalo Chicano of the Civil Service Commission. We will submit this, sir. Thank What you. does validation Great entail, uh, sir? Ano, anong ibig sabihin ng validation? Ano ang sinasabi ng validation? Uh, Na-comply niya, sir, yung mga qualification standards ng Civil Service Commission as to education, as to experience na five years managerial, at saka training na 120 hours in management and supervision. I will submit, sir, the, the report of uh, civil service. But there is no validation as to his fitness to be the vice president for legal affairs of the biggest government corporation. Yung, uh, Meron ba? Sir, yung, ano, yung qualification standards kasi sa mga senior vice president. The uh, question of the Honorable Libulia is may validation ba to be head of legal? To be head of legal para siya ang maging number one lawyer ng Fair Health. Meron bang validation yan? Yung uh, qualification standards so kasi ng uh, SBP for legal, sir, sa PhilHealth ay ano lang, generic na 
five years in the position involving management and supervision. Wala akong nakasabi na as lawyer. So generic ho yung... Uh, so you don't... So ang lawyer, pareho-pareho lang yan. A lawyer does not need qualification. Basta lawyer ka, okay ka na. Yun na sinasabi nyo. Uh, uh, BP Dennis Mas, ang tanong ho yung sa legal, ah, hindi dun sa senior vice president. May validation ba na mag-head siya, na siya ang tama sa legal? Sir, yung appointment ho sa kasi niya, legal? Hindi, meron nga bang validation o wala? Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, let's look at this, ha? Mr. De Rosario, there were 220 cases in Region 1. Did you review these cases after you became the Senior Vice President for Legal Affairs? Uh, no, sir. Bali, ang ano po dyan, yung uh, fact-finding investigation and enforcement department, uh, sila po yung nagkikipag-coordinate po sa ating regional offices. Hindi, ang tinatanong ko, did you review them after when you became the Senior Vice President for Legal Affairs? Did you review these cases? No, sir. The, I okay. Teka, teka. Tama na. Next. Okay. Oh. Sige, next question. Yung Accenture case, did you review it? Uh, no, sir. Kasi wala pong pending case sa Accenture. Ano, ano? Walang? There's no pending uh, case po na about sa Accenture. It, it, aside from the uh, one pending investigation po noon that we filed. We, we The PhilHealth Board decided to file the cases. An investigation report that has been pending for several years. So who is investigating, Mr. De Rosario? I'm sorry, sir. Who is investigating the Accenture case? Sino nag investiga Sir, mayroon pong fact-finding committee po yan. Uh, the, uh, it, it was composed of uh, 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 ano, no, a number of lawyers. If I remember it right po, yung mga kasama po dyan ay uh, sila, ano, sila attorney Dodi Pineda po. Siya po chairman. So walang nangyayari sa Accenture case. Mr. De Rosario, but even if you are the vice president, for senior vice president for legal affairs of Field Health. Sir, yung, yung una pong mga uh, investigation, tapos na po yun, uh, nagkaroon na po ng verdict po doon, meron lang pong naiwan na uh, isang investigation report that I, uh, nung nag-conduct po kami ng inventory, uh, we presented it to the Field Health Board. So yung mga tao po doon na nirecommend ng committee to be charged, na charged na po. Ano ang charge na nirecommend na final ng committee? Ano sir, grave miskanda. Grave miskanda. 140 million pesos grave miskanda lang ang final niyo. Sir, yung ano po, yung uh, uh, yung una pong charge nila uh, ay ano din po yun na uh, grave miskanda. So na dismiss na po yung mga yun. Yun po sir, yun ang nirecommend ng committee. Uh, okay. No criminal complaint. You, you are now the head of the legal sector of Fair Health, how many lawyers are there in the whole Fair Health? Full Fair Health system. Uh, sa legal, uh, including sa region, sir, siguro around mga 20 plus, sir. 20 plus lawyers. Uh, yung permanent lawyers, yes. Uh, we have, ano kasi, sir, we have uh, mga project based. Uh, how many of them are more senior than you? in terms of law, law experience or being a lawyer among the 20? Uh, I think, sir, more than 10 or half or more. Maybe most of them are more senior yes, than you as a yes, lawyer, sir. Yes, Mr. I, De Rosario. I, I so, sir. Yes, sir, that's correct. Alam mo naman, ba't tinatanong kayo, Mr. De Rosario, no? It's not to belittle your, your competence or your yes, capability. It's just that you are holding the most important legal job in the biggest government corporation with a budget of 200 billion and here you are appointed as senior vice president for the legal sector with less than five years experience as a lawyer am i correct mr de rosario that's correct sir if i will be reassigned i will be very happy mr president but you are enjoying being senior vice president of in health no, Kahit na hindi ka bagay sa legal sector, kinukuha mo pa rin yung posisyon ng senior vice president for legal. Uh, 
Sir, when I was uh, transferred here, uh, the president uh, then requested me three times. I, I refused three times. But, uh, yun sir, actually, kung pwede lang, kung makakabalik lang ako sa region, sa, I, I will prefer that, Mr. Chairman. Now, Mr. De Rosario, meron pong allegations na kayo daw ang main player sa Fair Health Mafia. Would you deny that? I, I, I absolutely deny that, uh, Mr. Chair. Wala po tayong tinatago. Pumirma na po tayo ng, uh, yung sa waivers sa AMBAC. Uh, we are willing to submit sa, uh, sa lifestyle. Sir, sobrang, ano po niyan, uh, sobrang unfair po ng, uh, uh, nasasaktan po tayo ng gusto dyan, pati po yung mga miyembro na... Na allegations ngayon, kaya tinatanong ko sa'yo, that's an allegation. So you are denying that, Mr. De Rosario? Sir, wala po. At, uh, wala po tayong uh, uh, kinasasapian na kahit anong pong mafia. Uh, tayo so, po ay tapat na naglilingkot po dito. Mr. De Rosario, kung meron kang pagkukulang, it is that you are not really fit to be the senior vice president of the legal sector of field health which is now embattled and has na napakarami ng problemang legal, andyan ka, alam mong hindi naman ikaw talaga ang dapat humahawak ng legal problems ng field health. Kung meron kayong kasalanan, it's more of incompetence, Mr. De Rosario. Would you call it that? Uh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I beg to disagree. Uh, the records will show that during the li my limited time here, uh, na doble po yung pagpa-file ng criminal complaints, uh, tapos tumaas po yung bilang ng investigations at resolution ng cases. Yun po yung katotohanan, Mr. Chairman. How many cases were filed uh, while you were... The figures. In the, in the past year, ilan ng kasong na-file uh, ng field health sa court? Sorry sir, there's somebody is calling the phone uh, it keeps on. Uh, How many? Uh, sir, I, we have, uh, I, I, I don't have the records now with me, but on the criminal complaints, before my time here, there were only 11 complaints filed. And uh, ngayon po, na-doble na po yan. Although I'm not really happy with the figures. So na-doble na, there are 22 cases filed now? Or 30 cases, yes, Mr. De Rosario? Yes, that's correct. That is your oh, output you? for... Oh, that is your oh, output for the for one year na kapag file kayo ng 30 cases. Yan ang sinasabi nyo. Tapos sir, yung administrative cases po natin, marami po tayo na-file uh, in thousands po yan. So makikita po ninyo yung uh, na-file since 2013 until 2017. Mas marami pa po yung uh, na-file Mr. De Rosario, ito na lang. Ano ba lang mulya? Sir. Pwede lang kong bilis sa singit. Ang ibig nyo pong sabihin nung yung, uh, pina, yung pinalitan ninyo, ang na-file lang niya ng case ay labing isa because you have doubled, sabi mo, yung filing ninyo. Yes sir, hindi lang po yung pinalitan ko. Mula pa nung panahon na naunang panahon niyan. Sino ang so, nakaupo dyan ng mga panahong yan? Several SBPs na po yung umupo po rito. Yes, but sino yung nakaupo prior sa inyo? The Attorney Jermaine Lim po, Your Honor. Before him, sino? I think it's uh, uh, Attorney Ed Asuncion. So, Lim, Asuncion, sino pa? Uh, you... Attorney Bong Galicto. Okay, sino yung... So, so, Mr. De Rosario, in 22 years na sa field health ka, halos walang ginawa yung legal department of field health about all of these cases that can involve malversation, violation of the Anti-Graft Act, plunder, etc., etc., etc. Like estafa. Walang nakakasuhan na ganung kaso. Meron, sir. Pero labing isa nga lang po. Isa lang. Labing isa, labing isa. Ah, ano yan? Criminal cases yan that are already pending in court? Yes, sir. At marami po... Or doon pending with the sir. fiscal? May malaking diferensya yan eh. Yung, okay. yung kasong yan ba, nasa fiscalia o nasa korte na? Yung mga nasa fiscalia, Mr. your owner na dismiss pa. Mr. Chair, may I, may I ask if the resource person, this attorney, De Rosaro, is still under his continuing oath? Yes, he is under his continuing oath. Because uh, there are several uh, things that he is talking about, which are against the records that I, uh, in my, that are in my possession. For example, yung sinasabi ko kanina, merong SPA na si dinerekta siya na siyang magfile, wala siyang ipinail kahit isa. 
These are 220 cases na iniwan niya sa Region 1. Pagkatapos kung ano-ano yung sinasabi niya, I just want to make sure na ibang record ng sinasabi niya kaysa sa paghahawak natin dito. Yung binabanggit niya, Honorable Marcoleta, dun sa legal na, sa taas, na central office. So, sa central office, Mr. Chair, tingnan mo, sinuspin din niya ang napakaraming tao. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ang tanong ko sa kanya, Mr. Chair, kung nandiyan pa siya, did you file any criminal case against these people na sinuspindi mo? Kilala mo ito, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, walong tao sinuspindi mo. Did you ever file any criminal case as against these eight people that you suspended by way of an ad hoc committee that you constituted? Uh, Mr. Chair? Tinatanong uh, kita, yan ang ayaw ko sa'yo eh, Mr. Chair. Ka na, yes, tina, sir, no lang. Yes, sir, no lang ang sagot. Nag-file ka ba ng criminal case dito sa sinispindi mong walong tao? Kilala mo lahat ito. Hindi ko na ba magitin ang pangalan. Sir, di pa ako nag-suspend sa mga yan. It was the Philip Court. Hindi mo nga, hindi nga ikaw ang nag-suspend. Hindi ko naman tinatanong ko ikaw nag-suspend eh. Kanina pa sinabi ko sa'yo, kung sasagot ka, intindihin mo yung tanong sa'yo. Sinuspindi mo yung mga taong ito sa pag-aakala na napakarami nilang kasalanan. Ang tinatanong sa'yo, did you ever file any single criminal case as against these eight suspended people of PhilHealth? Mga regional directors ito. Sir, the... the... They, Did uh, you file? Were referred to the National Bureau of Investigation, Mr. Sus, Mr. Mario, Chair. Na tao ito. Hindi, hindi siya nag-file. Hindi nag-file. Ito, ito pa yung... Ito pa yung... Ang totoo niyan, alam mo ba, as the head of the legal department, ah, sabi nga ni Congressman uh, Rimulia, ikaw yung the most brilliant lawyer on the top of a 200 million... Uh, 200 billion corporation. A billion corporation. Meron kang kinonstitute dito sa ad committee suspending these eight people pero yung apat dito were charged by the NBI dito sa ito yung well med tat apat dito ang charge ng NBI isa sa perpetual sucor charge sa ombudsman pero ito ang kinonstitute mo sa ad hoc committee para suspendihin yung walo Hindi ka naman nag-file kahit isang criminal case. Ngayon nagyayabang ka. Sinasabi mo, ang dami mong penal na case. Sino po ba yung kanina nagsalita dyan tungkol sa civil service? No, Mr. Chairman, ano lang. Ika-clarify ko lang, Attorney De Rosario. Go ahead. You got an SPA to file the 220 cases in what year? Uh, 2017 po yan, Mr. Chair. So, 2017. A year after you became the lawyer, a lawyer, nag-OIC na kayo ng legal department ng Fair Health, tama ba yun? Noong 2018 na po, Mr. Chair. 2018 na kayo. But you were already working with the legal department in 2017. No, 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 sir. You were not... Sa anong position mo na to 2017? Uh, regional Vice President of Region 1. Region 1. Yung 220 cases na binigyan kayo ng SPA para mag-file, final nyo ba yung 220 cases? Uh, sir, yung kausap po namin dyan, yung PhilHealth Region 1, ang sabi po sa amin dyan ay may mga inconsistencies po doon sa investigation report. At inaayos po yan yung uh, uh, mga ebidensya. At hindi po yan, uh, that refers to 220 counts against one provider lang po. Okay, okay. 220 yan. counts against one provider. 2017, 2020 na ngayon. May nangyari na ba since then? Yes, sir. Yun nga po yung sabi nung uh, pago ng lawyer po doon sa Region 1 that they are uh, 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 checking on the, on the evidence and on the report that there are some inconsistencies. So after and four years, report. they're just checking on the evidence, Mr. De Rosario? Yeah, that's the representation of the PhilHealth Region 1 office po. Mr. Chairman, I will not anymore lengthen my questioning on this matter. I think the point is proven. Yes. Some people are not meant to serve such a big corporation with such gargantuan problems who are not really qualified for the position. Yes. Mr. Chairman, may sakit talaga ang field health. Uh, field health Rosario. is sick to the bone, Mr. Chairman. May sakit talaga ang field health. Malubhang malubha. At yung mga gagamot dito, lalo na sa legal problems, wala po sa loob ng field health ngayon because it is my opinion and my submission that the person serving as the senior vice president for the legal sector is not competent, Mr. Chairman, to handle that job.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Rimulia. Attorney Del Rosario. Mr. Are, Chair. Are you still there? Chair. Yes, sir. I'm still here. Oh, yung po tinatanong ni Congressman Rimulia, quick lang, di ba sa filial to, pwede niyong isuspend at pwede niyong ipagbayad ng fine? Yes, sir. That bakit, is correct. Bakit po dun sa WellMed, hindi niyo sinuspend? Fine lang po ang bayad nila. Sa answer, yung WellMed, natanggalan na po na accreditation po yan. Ano yun? Natanggal po na, natanggalan na po na accreditation yung WellMed, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, but they were not suspended. There was no, in the administrative case that you have here, wala silang ganun. Uh, there's no need to suspend because their accreditation was already withdrawn, Mr. Chairman. And uh, on the board, they have not paid? Is that correct? Yung board, uh, of, yung sa fine nila, hindi pa na-decide ng board? Mr. I'm not sure if they have, I think they have filed uh, a, uh, an appeal before the board. Uh, Attorney Jonathan Mangawang will be the best to see. Hindi, kahit na po, hindi naman sa korte, doon lang po sa board ng Philels. Hindi niyo po ho na, dis, na yes, Attorney Mangawang. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Just to inform the board, uh, the, the, the Congress, uh, the board actually uh, deliberated on 80 counts of... Uh, claims for non-admitted or non-treated patients uh, offense uh, of the well-med uh, early this year and the uh, decisions however have not been served because the PBRs or the fill up board resolutions are still being uh, routed for complete signature of the board members present. Kailan po ninyo inaprobahan yung resolution? But, uh, Attorney Mangawan, kailan po ninyo inaprobahan? Before COVID or during COVID? Uh, I think February 13, Mr. Chair, and uh, the Attorney Mangawang. Yes, sir. So February, hindi nyo pa ako na pirmahan. Uh, we are still completing, sir, the the signatures by the board members present, but COVID, the pirmahan yun ng yung IRM na pirmahan yun na. Yung mga kailangan magbayad sa inyo ng penalties, hindi nyo pa pinirmahan. Is there a deliberate delay to approve by the board? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Uh, how come it's like that? May COVID ka na na-approve, may IRM ka na, ang dami nyo na na-approve, pero itong well-made, hindi nyo pa na-approvahan. Sir, meron lang akong tatanong kay Senior Vice President Management Services related kasi sa kaninang tinatanong ni Kong Rimulya. Eh. Okay, if yes, I may, uh, Honorable Marcoleta, uh, I'll, I'll pang, allow you to ask the question ito. and then uh, the Honorable yes. Fernandez can uh, proceed. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. SBP Dennis Mas. Yes, sir. Di ba sa civil service law, yung uh, salary grade 24, eh, kailangan sa inyo ay merong master's degree? Master's degree, sir. Okay, Division sino sa inyo dito yung uh, nando sa salary grade and higher? Dito sa mga kasama mo ngayon. Oh, sir. Isa lang yung qualification standard. Salary grade sila lahat na 24 or up? Oh. So, lahat ba sila, can I assume na meron sila lahat master's degree? Uh, except, sir, may mga attorney five. Kayo po ba merong master's degree? Oh, meron akong dalawang master's degree. Sir, ano po? Isang, meron akong master's degree at saka isang PhD sa UP. Yung mga kasama nyo ngayon, merong master's degree? Meron sila, sir. Si Mr. Limshako. Hindi, yung mga kasama mo ngayon. Oh, sir, meron silang master's degree. Is that true, uh, Dr. Pargas? You have a master's degree? I'm a doctor of medicine, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ang sir, sinasabi ko, master's degree. Sir, sir can I, ano, meron? again? Meron uh, po. It, ito po, sir, yung qualification standards ng mga... Na mga... Hindi, ang sinasabi ko civil service eh. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, pa, paligoy-ligoy kayo eh. Lahat ba nang nandito merong master's degree? Considering that they are higher than salary grade 24? Meron sir, walang master's degree, pero merong substitute naman. Okay, so sino yung walang master's degree? Can you please raise your hand? Okay. So, in violation na ito ng ano eh. Ang balita ko rito, you have to confirm this. Meron yatang nag-request sa inyo sa civil service na i-waive yung, uh, yung qualification na yon. Meron ba? I have documents to show you. Yes, sir. May, may... Oh, why did you do that? Sandali Bakit lang, kayo kumingi ng waiver? What is so spectacular and special in your positions that you need to ask civil service? 
na i-waive yung qualification na yun. Again, ang sabi nga ni Congressman Remulla, you were chosen from the few, you are the few chosen from among several people qualified to handle a very big responsibility to protect the fund of PhilHealth. Pagkatapos hihigi kayo ng waiver, i-waive yung, why? Uh, sir, can I read, sir? Why do you have to ask the lowering of a standard or to ask for a waiver of that qualification when that qualification probably is the one or the least needed to protect the fund of pill health? No, no, Answer. Uh, sige, sir. What no. is the reason why, why do you have to ask civil service to waive that particular qualification? Nakalagay ho, sir, sa civil service rules that uh, agencies are are encouraged to set specific or higher standards for their positions, including the required competencies. Uh, so sa ngayon, na, sa kayo, you are encouraged na kumuha so, ng mas malaking karunungan. Ang tinatanong ko sa'yo, oh. meron kasing requirement na master's degree. Pero ang ginawa ninyo, you requested PhilHealth to waive that qualification. Can you imagine? Sir, Are you so special that, oh. Sir, that the civil service granted your request? Meron ba sa Zoom, uh, Mr. Chair, na membro ng civil service dito? Can you imagine? Sir, Humingi sila na i-waive yung qualification ng master's degree. Bakit naman? Kung yun ang inihingi talaga eh. Sir, lahat po. Napaka-special ninyo. Mr. Chairman, can I reply? Last question, Mr. Chair. Hindi ko maintindihan ang sagot niya eh. Madam Actuary, are you licensed? Are you a licensed actuary? Uh, yes, sir. I'm an associate actuary. I'm asking you point blank. And you are under oath. Are you a licensed actuary? I have an associateship in the Actuarial Society of the Philippines. Ang tinatanong ko po sa inyo kung may lisensya kayo. Meron ba yung lisensya? Parang ano po, ang tanong po ni Kong Marcoleta, eh, kung kayo ay abogado, hindi nyo po sa'yo din sabihin, nag-abuga siya kayo. Dapat yung pong lisensya. Apo, Bilang uh, actuary po kayo eh. 200 billion fund to be protected by people, chosen, selected few to protect the fund of pill health. Isa yan ang actuary. Napaka-importante. Further, further clarification, Kusito. Honorable Malcoreta, yung 200 billion, nearly yun. Oh, Ibig sabihin, pwedeng maipon ang maipon correct. yun that at pwede pang lumaki. Opo. That is the reason why an actuary is a very important position. I am asking her kung siya meron pong lisensya. Meron po ba, Ma'am Neri? Um, kasi po yung hindi po under PRC ang, ang mga actuary. It's, Madam, uh, the question given... is answerable by yes or no. Okay. Yes, yes sir. Meron kayong lisensya? Hindi po, um, ang kinoconfer po ng Actuarial Society of the Philippines is associateship and fellowship. <laughs> so, so, ang ibig ba sabihin ng PhilHealth should lower their standards, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Yes, ang go ahead. Actuarial Society of the Philippines kasi is the one that qualifies people to be actuarial practitioners, no? Uh, it is a very unique uh, sense because, a very unique organization because they qualify people to join them. Because it's really for the mathematically gifted, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so in this case, you are part of that. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, Honorable Fernandez, you may continue. Ah, you may now start. Okay, marami marami po salamat at lumipat naman po muna tayo panandali sa IT.